Hello and welcome to Kids Can Sunday School. I'm Eden. And I'm Sarah. And this morning, in the, we are going to stay in the book of Matthew for our Bible lesson. But before we get there, let's get into our craft for today. This morning, we're going to make grape clusters. In your take home packet, you will find a grape cluster cutout and some strips of paper. You will need a green marker, crayon, or colored pencil, and a glue stick. Or you can use regular glue, too. Oh, yeah. That's what we are going to so use. So you are going to want to take your strips of paper, and you're going to want to turn them into paper loops. Like, you're going to want them to look like this. But you'll notice when you try to do that with this paper, this size paper, they're, they're really, so big. really big. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your paper, fold it in half, they're really easy They're to really, rip yep. and fold. And so you just fold it in half and then you can just rip it. And then you can make your thing into a loop. Eden, did you want to go ahead and glue yours? Sure. You don't just have to use a glue stick. We're using Elmer's glue. Yeah, we just had Elmer's glue handy, so we're using Elmer's glue. So Eden's going to glue. She's going to glue the first loop. So you can either, you can do this a couple ways. You can do it one loop at a time. Or you can glue them on all together. You can make a bunch of loops and glue them on all together. My tip for you guys is that before you start gluing, color the leaf and the branch on your paper with your colored pencil or crayon marker, whatever you're going to use. Because I waited in the sample that I did earlier. You go ahead, Eden. So she's glued the first grape on. I waited in the sample that I did earlier to color until all my grapes were glued on and it was a little difficult to color yeah, around I those grapes that I see added. That it was a little so you're going to add your grapes onto your paper. You're going to make your loops and add them on your paper and you're going to um, make sure you press them down really firmly so they'll stick on there and you're going to probably like, you're going to keep going like that, that. and eventually you're going to it's going to turn into you're going to have a 3D group cluster you can do it like any way you can turn the loops sideways like this way oh yeah you can it doesn't matter which which way you glue your grapes on we just chose to do ours this way yeah. and depending on what take home packet you picked up you might notice that your strips are green we have some with green strips of paper and some with purple strips of paper because there are purple grapes and green grapes and there are even red grapes. But I prefer the red green grapes, grapes. The red grapes don't look like red paper. Yeah. So we just went with purple and green. I, what what color grapes do you prefer? I prefer green grapes. I do like green grapes too. I like all the grapes, but um, I think green I buy grapes, green I mean, grapes most often. Yeah, they're the most crunchiest for me. So we are making a a grape picture. Because our story that we're going to hear about in a few minutes takes place in a vineyard. And I'm going to ask Eden to read it in just a second. Before, and a vineyard is like a vineyard. A basically. vineyard is a vineyard. It's where grapes grow. And so that's why we made a grape picture today. But before we have Eden read to us this morning, Eden, what would you do if I offered you... A hundred dollars to clean the basement. Um, I'm not sure. Well, I'd probably well, do it. Yeah, let's for the sake of the illustration here. Let's just say that you agree to clean the basement for a hundred dollars. Yeah, you and okay. I don't like cleaning so the you, basement at she all. She doesn't like cleaning the basement at all. So you agree to clean the basement, and you start working in the basement. And you're working along, working along, and you get to about lunchtime. Take a little break, have a sandwich or something. Nom, nom. And then Or maybe have some grapes. Maybe have some grapes. And then after we have our lunch, I see Nolan and he's just hanging out upstairs playing video games, not really doing anything active. That is really really great with his time. He's been on video games for a while screen time for the day's almost over so I see him doing that and I say hey Nolan would you come and clean the basement for us I will pay you to clean the basement and Nolan agrees to come and help 
and he helps finish clean the basement. And so it gets to be about five o'clock at night and the basement's all clean. And I say, okay, I'm ready to pay you guys. And I hand you a nice crisp hundred dollar bill. Oh yeah, And then money. I turn, I know, so I turn to Nolan and I hand Nolan a nice crisp hundred dollar bill. Would that be fair? It, it, it kind of doesn't seem yeah, fair at first. Fair at first when you think about it. But you're right. If you keep thinking about it, it's completely fair because I told you that I would pay you a hundred dollars, and I paid you the money that I promised you that I told you for mm -hmm. the work that you promised that you would do. And how much money I decide to give Nolan. It really isn't your concern. It's yeah. my money. I'm not taking money away from you to pay Nolan. The money I would be giving Nolan is between me and Nolan. It's not It's not your concern. It's not any of your business. Yeah. It's my business. I have a confession. What? If this happened to me, I think I'd be a little ticked off. I'd be like, why, is, why did I have to work all day to just get the same amount of money of these other people that came and only worked part of the day. I yeah. think I'd be a little frustrated at first. I think I have another confession too. What? I didn't make this story up on my own. Oh my goodness, mom. It, How was, dare in, you? it was inspired by our parable for today. Our parable for today is found in Matthew chapter 20 and it's verses 1 through 16. And I'm going to have you read it, but I'm not going to have you read it out of your Deep Blue Kids Bible today. I'm going to have you read it out of a different Bible. Do you want to tell the, our friends where you're reading it from today? Today, we are reading from the Spark Story Bible. Hooray! Even though I love my Deep Blue Kids Bible, I like variety. Yes. That's why I'm excited to use this one. So would you please read today for, for us the parable of the vineyard workers? Yes. Here's the picture. The vineyard workers. Jesus told this story to teach about God. A farmer needed workers for his vineyard where he grew grapes. Will you work in my vineyard, he asked some people. How much will you pay, they answered. One day's pay, the farmer said. Okay, said the people, and they went to work. The farmer hired other workers at different times all day. When they were done, the farmer paid all of the workers the same. The first workers were angry. You paid the last workers the same as us, they shouted. We worked longer in the hot, hot sun. The farmer answered, I gave you what I promised you. Are you upset because I'm being generous to the others? Jesus said that God is generous like the farmer. The last will be the first, and the first will be the last with God, he said. That's it. That's Man, it. it was a short story today. It was short, and it sounds like our, like the story I kind of told, doesn't it? Yeah, it See does. See where I got the mm -hmm. idea from? Mm -hmm. So, thank you for reading that, Eden. You're welcome. I think that this parable is one of those ones that can be hard to understand, hard to, hard to wrap our minds around, but if we really look at it, we can understand some things about God from it. So... We need to remember that parables are teaching stories and that Jesus wants people to learn something from them. So we really want to understand the things that Jesus wanted the people he was talking to to understand. To understand what Jesus wants us to understand, we have to start with the foundational truth. Have you ever built Legos, Eden? Yeah, I have. Like, Have you ever built Legos on a rug or on the carpet? Yeah. What happens if you're trying to build them, but you don't have that flat piece that you can stick those Legos on to keep everything stationary? Um, I think they'll probably fall over. They kind of fall over. They're not very stable, right? Yeah. So we need to build the things that we know about Jesus on foundational truths from the Bible. And one of those foundational truths is that God loves people, all people, every person. doesn't matter who they are, where they've been, what they've done. He loves people. So just like when we build Legos, if we want our Lego structures to, to be strong and stand and last, we have to start with that that base that is flat yeah. 
so that we can stack things on. We have to start understanding God with truths that we can build the rest of other truths upon. So this truth that God loves people is a foundational truth. We need to build things upon this. So we know because God loves people, he sent his son Jesus so that we can be reunited and have a right relationship with God, right? Because we know we all do stuff that gets in the way of our relationship with God. So when Jesus came, he took all that stuff away, right? Yeah. So God did that because he loves people and because he wants all people to experience his love in their lives and know him as their forever friend. So this is what where the parable comes in. So when Jesus is talking about the parable, he's talking about the vineyard owner and the workers and the payment and all these things. And all these things work together to teach us the truth that God loves us and he's generous to us. So the the vineyard owner represents God and the workers represent people like us. Yeah. And the payment represents salvation, which comes from Jesus. Mm -hmm. No matter when someone finds God, just like in the story, no matter when someone wor started working in the vineyard, the payment was the same. No matter when someone finds God, God's love for them is the same. God's grace is the same. God treats us much better than we deserve. God doesn't give us what we deserve. Instead, God says, I'm going to give you love and I'm going to give you grace that saves you. Anyone who accepts him, whether it's when they're 10 years old, whether they're 42 years old, whether they're 80, 82 years old, yep, it doesn't matter if somebody has known God their whole life or waits till the very last minute to know God, God loves us all the same and he's generous to all of us the same. And he's generous to all of us the same because he loves us doesn't matter what we do or how much we do or how long we've known him or walked in a relationship with him. It just is because God is love and God loves us. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. So do I. Eden, would you do our prayer this morning? Yeah, let's say a prayer. God, you are so generous. Thank you for loving us and sharing that love with us even when we don't deserve it. Help us to share your love with others. Amen. Amen. Thank you. For our memory verse this week, we are going to memorize the last verse of of our Bible passage from Matthew 20, verse 16. So those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. And this is a reminder that God loves us all the same. His love for us isn't based on how long we have been his friend or not. It just is. That is what the story Jesus told told illustrated for us you're exactly right so this morning we have a little extra time we yeah. chose to read our bible passage a little differently we didn't read all of matthew 20 verses 1 through 16 in its entirety we read it out of a kids version bible so it was a little shorter we don't have any science today Ooh, i love science i know miss Karen will be back soon um this was a hard one to come up with science for it so was. we are not we're not going to hold okay. that against her. We're just going to be excited for when she comes back. So here's what I thought we would do. I thought we could have a little fun today and do something a little silly. I thought since we talked about grapes and we talked about a vineyard today, we could tell some grape jokes. Yeah. To, what do sure. you think? You, you, you ready? Sure. Okay. So my first one is, why did the grape stop in the middle of the road? I don't know. Because he ran out of juice. <laughs> That's really funny. It's also corny, but... <laughs> yeah, it is corny. Why aren't grapes ever lonely? Why? Because they come in bunches. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. What is the new definition of divine? Um, I don't know. Something with grapes. <laughs> it is something with grapes. It's what the grapes grow on. Divine is what the grapes grow on. Get it? 
Why did why did Mr. and Mrs. Grape start a family? Why? Because they were excited about raising kids. <laughs> <laughs> what did the grape say when he got stepped on? I don't know. He let out a little whine. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have a grape joke that you want to share with us, we would love to hear it. Yeah, we would love to hear it, and that's all for today. Wait, 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 before you wrap up, where do they share their grape jokes with us at? At PFU. At Kids Kingdom Facebook Facebook page, page, or they can email me at... Christian at at PFUMC.org. Or they can text me. Yeah. So now... That's all for today. See you next time. Have a great week. Bye.